Hello, in this video we're going to be talking about data tables. Now a data table is something that you make up while you're working on your project and it's where you store the names and some information about uh, variables and database names. Now if you were doing the other VCE subject, which is the data focused one, then you would go into this in much greater depth and you would probably use a slightly different table. So the table that I'm talking about today is mostly useful for software development. So, why do we use a data table? Well, it's really useful if we're working in a team. So you've got a number of people that you're working with and you want to check if somebody's already created a variable to store this particular information or you want to say what it is or how it's constructed. Um, you might be doing the validations, for instance, and you want to know what data type it is, how big it should be, and so forth. It's also good just in terms of keeping your head straight on a bigger project. I've been working on quite a big project recently, and I certainly was sitting there a number of times and thought, gee, I wish I had a data table. I should just make a data table and be done with it. And certainly I should have. It would have saved me a lot of pain because I have used different names in different places. Um, and as I said earlier, it is about how we um, store our variables, but also we might call a variable something here, say in PHP, which is going to have a dollar sign in front of it, but it might have a different name when we're storing it in our MySQL database. And so our um, table, our data dictionary, will help us keep all of that straight in our head about what the, um, what the variable is called in different circumstances. Now, I want to talk very quickly about naming conventions before we get on to looking at an actual data table. You should have a consistent naming convention that you're using in your data table. Uh, one of your options is snake case, which is what I'm showing you at the moment. You've got an underscore in between your words. I'm not actually super sure why it's called snake case. The other is Pascal case, which is a capital at the start of every word. This gives you, uh, the user, an opportunity to tell what the separate words are, which is often useful, particularly as you're using longer variables. Uh, camel case is my personal go-to, um, and that has, you start in lower case, but the second in every subsequent word has a capital. Uh, and then there is Hungarian notation, where you actually put a letter at the start of it to say what the data type of it is. Now, in some programming environments, they will in fact say, we specify this case um, when we're in this environment and this when we're in this environment. So sometimes you'll store your say, database names in one and your variable names in another. And so it's good to be cognizant of what all of those are. So let's have a look at our example here, uh, which I have pinched from another site called SQL Shack, and I'll put a link to them in the doobly-doo. Uh, so first of all, we've got our field name. Now this is telling us what our actual variable is going to be called, and that's where it's really important that we have that common naming convention. And I would encourage you in your data table to have uh, the full information as much as possible in there. So number rather than n. Uh, play a score rather than just score or S. Um, make it as descriptive. You do have to strike a balance between it being too long and too short, but I would err towards it being longer and more descriptive, particularly on a larger project. Uh, the data type is useful when you're working with a database because you'll probably need to set up the data type there to hold that information. But it's also useful in terms of your own development work on the front end because your validation, you, when you're validating for existence and then type, well, you can check whether they are in fact putting in a number or whether the string is long enough or if the string is too long. All of these things are possible when you know the type. The next one on there, of course, is the field length. And again, really useful for validation. And when it comes to database design, you don't want to have a field that can hold a thousand characters uh, when you're only going to put 20 characters in there. So that's important. Uh, they've got a constraint. I don't think you always have to have a constraint, but I think it's good sometimes to have a description and say, well, this is what I'm using it for, which is what's in that last column. And perhaps some notes about how it works and where it's used. So it's not just one thing, a um, data dictionary. It, um, it expands and contracts depending on what you need, but that's your basic format of it, and it's really useful in terms of adhering to the standards that you set for the team, working with other people, but also working with yourself and having an opportunity to keep everything, all your information straight. 